that republic, in terms of its constitution, it was a functional federation. Not a normal federation, but a functional federation. Why functional and not normal? Because there was no geographical division between Turks and Greeks of Cyprus at that time. But all the government functions, all the state machinery were, all the competencies, all the functions of the state were shared, divided and shared between the two communities. For example, the president of the republic would be a Greek Cypriot who would be elected by the Greek Cypriot community only. The vice president who had some veto powers on important decisions like foreign policy, security, and finance would be elected by the Turkish Cypriots and would be a Turkish Cypriot. The government, the cabinet, will be composed of 10 people. Seven of them will be Greek Cypriot. Three of them will be Turkish Cypriot. In the legislative branch, there would be a House of Representatives, a parliament. Again, in the same ratio, there would be 50 seats in the parliament. 35 of them would be Greek Cypriots and 15 of them Turkish Cypriots. 70, 30 percent ratio division. Same thing in the uh, civil services and, and the police force and whatnot. So that was a deal. But that deal, that agreement, that constitutional order lasted, unfortunately, three years. In 1963, the president of the republic, Archbishop Makarios, I have my own um, opinion on electing a religious speaker as a president of a country. How, how stupid can you be um, to elect a religious figure as the president of a country? But that's a separate discussion. But he, Archbishop Makarios, claimed that this constitution is too complex. It cannot work. We have to change the constitution. So he proposed 13 um, 13 point changes on the Constitution. If you look at those 13 points, I'm not going to show you these 13 points now, but um, um, I'll just mention a couple of them. One was to abolish the president and the vice president of the veto powers. The other item was to abolish what is known as um, separate majority voting in the parliament. I always bring it to simple majority. What does that mean? That means in a way that the founding partners, the Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots, the relationship between them in 1960 was political equality, not numerical equality, right? Because numerically, it was 70, 30%. But in the decisions, because of veto powers, because of separate majority, you protect the smaller community. And that is the representation of political um, equality. However, the 13-point uh, changes were ripping the Turkish Cypriots all their privileges, like veto powers and um, security, uh, um, separate majority vote. So I don't want to bore you with all these, but I think these are very crucial details. So the Turkish Cypriots, they rejected these uh, constitutional changes or proposals. And when they rejected this, the Greek Cypriot political elite, in a way, resorted to violence, resorted to using force to put these changes into action. 
And of course, what happened? Ethnic clashes, ethnic violence started on the island in 1963 Christmas, December 1963. As a result, uh, the Turkish Cypriot element, the Turkish Cypriot community were expelled from the state machinery. So when we came to 1964, in practice, in reality, the Turkish Cypriots were not in the government machinery. So there was no vice president in the office. There were no um, members of the government. Turkish Cypriot members of the government. There were no Turkish Cypriot members of the parliament. There were no Turkish Cypriot government officials, civil servants. So what is known as the Republic of Cyprus, de facto, in reality, became a Greek Cypriot Republic. But it was continued to be recognized by the international community as the legitimate government of the Republic of Cyprus. Where in fact, in reality, the Turkish Cypriots were not participating into uh, the state machinery since then. And as some people ask uh, as to when the Cyprus problem started, well, maybe the landing of the first UN peacekeeping force in Cyprus was an indication. When was that? March 1964. March 1964. How many years ago? Math? Or majors? 46 years ago. So when some foreign journalists ask me uh, as to the uh, UN, visit, UN force in Cyprus peacekeeping, of course, I said they are not in the island for vacation. I mean, but maybe they are in the island for vacation now. But back in 1963-64, they were not in the island for vacation. They came to stop the bloodshed. It was basically, by and large, Turkish Cypriot blood which was shed in the 1960s. And they were here to protect it. But of course, things started to change later. Um, in 1967, anybody from Greece in the room? Nobody? What happened in Greece in 1967? You know? The military takeover. Anybody who is from Spain or Portugal? Nobody from Spain or Portugal? <laughs> okay, so you know what I'm talking about. Military takeover, military government, right? Military juntas, right? Not the best type of regimes, right? So in 1967, Greece was overtaken by the uh, military colonels. A fascist regime started in Greece. The fascist regime in Greece of course, very rapidly losing its popularity. If you are a fascist regime, you don't get a lot of popular support. But since they hold the power, they remain in the government for a long time. It started having problems with the Greek Cypriot leadership, believe it or not, in the late 60s. Because the military regime in Greece thought that the best thing to boost up its prestige is to unite Cyprus with Greece, a military victory. But Makarios, who probably his most important, let's say, hope or most important desire, let me put it that way, was to unite with Mother Greece, it was his lifelong desire, even he, in the 19, late 1960s, realized, because he was also a practical man, a smart man, realized that if Greece tries to unite the island with Cyprus, with, 
with itself, I'm sorry, this will prompt, this will invite a Turkish intervention. That Turkey as a guarantor of power, the guarantor of 1960 arrangement, would not let Greece to, to, to invade the whole island. So Makarios and the Greek government at that time, military regime, started having problems. The military regime in Greece tried to kill Makarios. He escaped from the first assassination attempt. And in 1974, to be precise, 15th of July, 1974, Greek military regime in Greece, they sent paramilitary troops in Cyprus to <coughs> unite the island, to topple Makarios first from the government and then to unite the island with Greece. To install a puppet government in Cyprus who would unite the island with Greece. Luckily, Makarios, he escaped from the, this second, let's say, assassination attempt to overthrow him from the government. I don't know if any of you have ever seen the picture of Makarios somewhere, Archbishop Makarios. Just like a regular archbishop, he was all dressed in black robe with a uh, sort of uh, turban-like uh, hat. He took it off and escaped from the palace. So very little number of people ever saw Makarios in normal dress, of course. So in a way, it helped him to change and get away from the rope. Um, he escaped. First he went to Paphos, which is a city in, um, in the southern part of Cyprus. And from there, there was the British bases, Akraturi British bases. From there, um, he took a helicopter, first went to Malta, and then from Malta to London, and then to the Security Council in New York. And he gave a speech I think 18th or 19th of July, 1974, saying that Greece is invading my country. Please intervene. So on the 20th of July, 1974, Turkey, as a guarantor of power, citing its uh, responsibility and rights as a guarantor of power, sent troops to Cyprus and intervened into uh, the situation in a way to prevent Greece from uniting um, with Cyprus. Now, that was the first phase of the um, military operation. And in August of the same year, there was a second phase of the operation, Turkish uh, military operation, which in a way um, led the island into what it looks like today, which was uh, divided into two. The reason for that was after the first military operation, they secured only a small pocket of land in Kyrenia area. And all the Turkish Cypriots who are living in Paphos, 